Welcome everybody. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody wherever you are. Um, distinguished mayors, city representatives and all the colleagues who join us today. Uh, we're hoping that you will join us to be part of the Asia Pacific Coalition Against Discrimination in the future. And this session is essentially um, about introducing you to APCAD talking about why uh, local government collaboration is important and how it can be useful to you, and then having some discussion about how we could build APCAD network for our region in the future. So I would like to start by um, just giving you a brief introduction and background to APCAD, which is the abbreviation for the coalition in Asia Pacific. Uh, to tell you a little bit about its formation and what has happened in the past, so you have an idea about what it's for. So if you could show the first presentation, please, Michelle. Okay, so this coalition was formed around 12 or 13 years ago at the same time as a global coalition was formed. Uh, please move on to the next slide. And it has been, um, it was first founded in Bangkok. A uh, key partner was the United Cities of Local Government, Asia Pacific. And it was formed as a regional, a sub regional network or under ICAR, which is the global coalition, which you'll learn about in a minute. The purpose of the network was specifically to promote networking amongst local governments and sub-national level authorities across Asia Pacific. And over the past 14 years, there's been a participation of around 60 members. Some of these are networks, national networks of local government, others are individual local councils, and some of them are provincial or other sub-national levels of government. So, the main purpose is promoting peace, tolerance, equality, and other aspects of social justice and to, to build better societies. And local government is very much on the forefront of that, providing services and support to local communities across the world. Next slide. So, what we're trying to do as we move forward is also to align the coalition with what's been happening in the world. And you've probably all heard about the Sustainable Development Goals. So we have now an, a global platform of goals about what we think a sustainable and just world should look like. And this is our roadmap for the future. We wish uh, to align what we do with everything at the UN um, with, with this. And uh, also the new urban agenda is um, another key aspect of what is happening globally. And the declaration of NONCI is in fact the global coalition's own platform for how it wishes to develop globally. So thank you, next slide. So over the years, APCAD has had a series of meetings and had discussions with local governments around a number of key issues. Uh, some of these issues have been covered at past meetings and other ones have been discussed as really critical things for local governments in the region. So over the series of past meetings, they have discussed disability, HIV related stigma, um, climate change, education, citizen participation and empowerment and also some other things that have come up as key things that local governments wish to discuss include things like social inclusion of migrants and housing is another key one that often comes up. Next slide, thanks. So one of the things we've been trying to do um, to provide a platform for the network and give very concrete ideas about what it can do for the future was to do a kind of a case study of how local governments could develop initiatives on specific priority areas such as migration. And migration is a real key issue for cities all across Asia Pacific because it's cities where the migrants are coming to 
whether it's internal or it's international. So we've been doing some research with other partners about the experience of migrants in cities, what is good access to services, lack of access to services, um, what happens in communities in terms of cohesion and whether or not they, how they connect with local communities or stay separate from local communities. And we hope that this is the kind of uh, action that can help local governments to develop policy responses that, that provide those kind of frontline services that are needed uh, at local government level. Next slide. So what we would like to do today is discuss a little bit more about a plan for the future. The role of Guangzhou City as the, the lead city to take us forward now into the next 10 year phase of, of ICA and the kind of networking that um, you would like to do and how we can strengthen this network to support local government's actions on inclusion for the future. So I did not introduce myself when I started, which was very um, remiss of me. So um, my name is Sue Vyers and I work at the UNESCO office in Bangkok. I am uh, leading the secretariat to support APCAD and uh, we're here today with uh, representatives of Guangzhou City as the lead city. And together, UNESCO and Guangzhou City would like to get your inputs today to see how we can build this network and make it the most useful to you as possible. Um, I was not working with the network all of those uh, last 14 years. I came to Bangkok a few years ago and the network was already quite quiet and we have been having discussions with partners about building it up again over those last few years. So I hope that today that we can do that and um, I welcome you all to the meeting. Thanks, Michelle. That's, that's it for that presentation, I think. So the, the program today is to firstly um, give you a little bit of information about what's happening globally and how this is going to fit into the bigger picture. Secondly, to have a bit of a, a discussion and some thoughts about what can local governments do in terms of inclusion? This is not a new thing to all of you. This is something that most of you are already doing and have programs on. So we'll also be hearing from Padang City uh, about an example of what they're doing. And then we'll be talking about the future and how we envisage this plan might move forward over the next 10 years with some specific ideas from Guangzhou City about how we're going to implement that plan and we will have a couple of breaks for Q&A as we move forward during that. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Benedetto Zaccaroli and my Italian pronunciation is probably as bad as my Thai. I've never got used to it after seven years in Thailand. Um, Benedetto has had a distinguished career in public service, both in Italy and internationally. And I think we're very lucky to have him here today because he's been associated with ICA for quite some time now and he knows it really well. So he has been an elected city councillor, metropolitan councillor and deputy mayor in Bologna. Um, he has led the city in areas of social and economic development, ICT and international relations. And in 2016, he was appointed chief of cabinets Cabinet and since 2017 General Secretary of the Presidency of the Council for Relations Between State and Religion. The, the European network is known as ECAR, the European Coalition of Cities Against Racism and Discrimination. And ECAR is a great example of how local governments act together and the success that this kind of coalition can have. So we've invited Benedetto here today to tell you a little bit about ECAR and how it is working and how APCAD will be a part of that network. So over to you, Benedetto. Thank you very much, Sue. <clears throat> I apologize in advance for my voice, but today I woke up just like this. So you, uh, I really apologize. Usually my, my voice is different than this one, but it's okay. So maybe Professor Shin can confirm that. Thank you so much. Uh, so, what about ICAR and ECAR? So, uh, just two ensemble. Uh, ICAR is in the international, and uh, as Sue said about uh, 
the APCAD is one of the arms. We have eight arms. We are a European coalition, the Canada coalition, the US coalition, the Latin American Caribbean cities coalition, the sub-Saharan African coalition, the Arab countries coalition, and finally, the European, here I am. So, uh, is uh, just 20 years ago, uh, we were in Paris and I was, let me say, elected as coordinator or president or I don't know of ICAR. And unfortunately, after that election, uh, the COVID arrived. So I, we didn't have a lot of occasion to keep in touch and to do something new about the ICAR situation. Because uh, also from the, let me say, acronymous of uh, each coalition, you can understand what different uh, shade there is about racism and discrimination around the world. So, for example, the APCAT is the Asian Pacific Coalition Against Discrimination. This is a word that is too general. It's too, is general. Uh, the ECAR is the European Coalition of Cities Against Racism. And stop. So what's happened, that's the, let me say, if I would speak like a French fashion stylist, I will say that in the last year, last two years, in each uh, gathering of panelists about this, this point, about development, uh, about uh, racism, discrimination, and so on, there is one key word that is essential for everyone, that is inter intersectionality. Without intersectionality, nothing happens anymore. We cannot speak only about racism, because racism is not just a general victims, but the victim of racism could be a gay man that is also victim of other discrimination. As she presented in the show as before, there are different kinds of discrimination. So this is the first point in which, on my opinion, we as ICAR, an international coalition, we have to work about intersectionality and how in the cities we can fight against discrimination and racism with an, uh, a real, uh, let me say, intersectionality uh, approach. That uh, can be really, really effective. So, the first point about an international coalition of cities and local government is that, that as you said and underlined, uh, <clears throat> the cities is the place where the people live, the newcomers, but also the, the autochthons, they live there is there in the square, in the street, in the public spaces that we learned from childhood to share with other space, right and duty. Is there the topic for everyone that is growing up? So is there that the actions has to be taken to be effective? The chief of state, the international organization, they can say, suggest something, a general frame of law. They can suggest a general frame, for example, in Europe, let me say that because I'm European, uh, that they can decide the quotation, the number of people that has to divide it in each European country that are migrants because we want a proportional welcoming of the people and newcomers. It's okay. But at the end of the speech, at the end of the story, every single look of a migrant, every single look of a man of a woman is a look that takes place in a city, in a, in a point, not like this in the world word means nothing in this sense. So this is the reason why we need, first of all, an inter-exchange among cities about the best practices, because humanity is humanity all around the world. It is not changing in Korea or in Italy or in Thailand or in US. It's every time the same, the human being, first of all. 
the human rights are universal, are not something that is local. There are not a chart of uh, human rights of Korean men and women and human rights from Italian women and men. No, absolutely. They are universal. So this is also to be a critical mass in front to the international level because the needs of the people they are taken from the cities and from the public spaces in the cities. So if we establish a network of cities, the voice of the cities could be heard better at the upper level, like at the governmental level or international level. This is one of the other key points for us, to be heard because sometimes some mayors and local government, they feel really, really alone. In this, this is an engagement to do things better. Also because we know that is not an easy uh, speech, an easy topics to be treated. Also during the election for a mayor is, uh, you know, the discrimination speech, the racist speech are so easy, so simplified, the things that's also in politics are really easy and is really not simple, not easy to be against these simplified speeches like racism and so on. Above all, when you have to gain vote to be elected. And so, uh, that means that we need cities that take an engagement in the medium and long term, not just a spot. We need to have the political level, for sure, but also the technical level, the directors of the department. And in that case, there is the intersectionality topic that takes place. So like uh, the cultural department in a city, the social department in a city can they have to interact they have to communicate is not only about a campaign uh, an advocacy campaign that we can fix the problem first of all we have to recognize that the problem there is we don't live in a heaven and our cities unfortunately could be better than others but they are not an heaven and the problem they are so every time that I meet uh, mayors or governors uh, that are part of the coalition, I said to them that I'm meeting a really brave man or woman in politics because it's not easy to be against racism and discrimination. It's more easy to be for or quietly for. And, uh, because is a speech and is a point that is coming against your personal gain politically. So intersectionality is the key. Second one, intersectionality at all the level, till the level of each department in the cities. The intersectionality means also internationalization of the local experiences that became the need to have a network like the continental network that we have and the international network the global network that is it so there are the three just to not only exchange good practices but also to let our voice be heard better from national and regional uh Polit policy makers, sorry. Sorry for my voice, I <clears throat> really need to stop here. I hope that was uh, enough for you. But there is the question and answer section maybe could be, sorry for my voice really, it's really difficult for me to speak, sorry. Thanks Benedetto. Um, I hope that gives everybody um, a good idea about why we think such a coalition or partnership of local governments working together can be really important because um, I, I think the points you make about the long-term vision, um, the, the power of working together in terms of 
getting your message across and lending weight to that message, I think is also an interesting one and how you can use that to advocate for as a group with um, higher levels of government, I think are very good points. So ICAR actually has one representative from each of the seven regions and the lead city, it's called the lead city in each region sits on that and they also talk about how they can collaborate and in fact, uh, one of the re things I was talking with my colleagues from headquarters about is that uh, one of the things looking forward is they would like to see more inter-regional collaboration between members of the network. So for example, APCAD and ECA might choose to work together in, in the future as one kind of option. So is there anybody who has a, a question about ECA or anything that Benedetto was talking about? You can put your question either in the Slido or, uh, and there's a link to that in the chat, or you could put it into the chat and somebody will uh, forward it to us. Uh, just to add something, if I may. So, uh, while ECHR is something that is the and the president of ECHR. So is an association as a right, for example, when in few hours we discuss at the steering committee about the reform of the 10 point plan of action, for example, for us it's impossible to reform that 10 point plan of action because we are an association following the German rights. So we cannot touch that plan because it's like to touch our constitutional choice. We can provide paperwork and something like that, but we cannot touch, but it's okay. So ICAR is something that is an ongoing process led by the UNESCO, that is the Secretariat in Paris of ICAR and the seven presidents of each region. So the, I'm fascinated by this point that ICAR is something that is an ongoing project. It's not, it's, it's not a project that is fixed, it's like this. It depends also on our creativity, on our engagement, on our disposal to be proactive with the help of UNESCO. This is for me one of the differences. So I don't see any questions coming through. So perhaps um, we'll just say that continue to think about those questions and if you put them up in the, the slider or the chat, we, we can come back to them later. Um, next, we thought it would be really interesting to, to think about, to stimulate your thinking about the kind of things that local governments already do to address discrimination, racism and, and to promote inclusion. And in fact, uh, we renamed the international network, the International Coalition of Cities for Inclusion and Sustainable Development because uh, to give it a more positive kind of a, a, a sounding name. And uh, we invited um, the acting mayor of Padang in Indonesia, um, Mr. Henry Septa, to give us an example of what Padang in Indonesia is doing. Uh, Indonesia is very actively working on a number of different areas uh, with UNESCO. They partner with us in promoting disability and they have a very active uh, network of cities working specifically on disability, working with people's organisations there. And we would like um, you, this is just one example of the many things that are, are being done across Asian cities. And we sure, we're sure that many of you would have other examples. But I think that the, what Benedetto mentioned about the power of sharing these best practices, the power of using them to advocate for these messages is, is what we want to get out of with this network. So um, I'm wondering if um, Mr. Septo, are you there? Because I don't actually see you on camera. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Henry Septa. On the way, just wait a minute. Okay, so um, we'll just wait a little bit for um, Acting Mayor Scepter. Um, so now, do you have any idea how long he will be?
through the microphone, please. I might ask Benedetto a question since we have a couple of minutes to um, to to kill. Um, so you're in Bologna, and um, what would be one of the key areas that has been the focus of Bologna's work to promote inclusion and combat racism? So in this moment in Bologna, as in Italy, there is the interreligious uh, speech and the interreligious topic that is really, really important to us. And for example, with the different personalities like the bishop of the city, I think that you can imagine that the Catholic religion is the most important in the city in Italy. But so we have newcomers. We have uh, we have to let me use carefully this verb. We have to teach to the people that the Catholicism is not the only one religion in the world. That are newcomers with new religions, and we have to live in peace. So to do that. We decided, for example, to have public spaces dedicated to all the faith together. And when some important uh, day is happening for a religion, we try to have some gathering together. For example, for the ritual of Aftar, I don't remember exactly the name is this one, when the, 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 the Ramadan is closing, the day in which they close the Ramadan. Uh, the mayor with the Catholic bishop, with the heads of the Muslim community in Bologna, they decided to do that open in the street with a big, big, very huge lunch all together. Bologna is an half million cities, it's not so big, okay? And uh, so all together, and that was an example of how the uh, representative of the different religion with the mayor that represent all the community because it's democratically elected can uh, gather together to show to the people that something new is happening and this is normal there is not nothing to be afraid of so these are carefully the, the things that you have to let me use this verb to sue in your community just to avoid that there are separation between different communities is not easy, is not easy. Has to be done carefully, but it's possible. I don't know if I answer. No, that's that. actually very interesting because that's not one of the issues we've certainly thought about discussing at the regional level. So, um, but it's a good food for thought because of course it's an issue in a lot of the countries here as well where we have um, a dominant religion and then many other religions, particularly with so many migrants in the region. We do have another question now. Um, how do you see the potential for partnership building among cities in a big global conference, such as the World Human Rights Cities Forum? Uh, is a question to me. Yes. The, the potential are a lot. Is the potential of friendship, but from friendship uh, came with everything. So. We have to try to bind our cities with these international relations that are not, uh, let me say, during the, before the end of the Cold War, there were this uh, idea of twinship between cities that was a fantastic idea. The, the world was really less traveling and less snow that is before. So there were the occasion for the mayor of Bologna to come to the mayor of Tokyo and say, okay, we are friends because we are so far. So now, despite the COVID situation, but now the world is really, really flat and more and more close for everyone. So we need something that impact in the cities. We need something because, um, I don't know, is a process ongoing, goes to this. And having cities part of this process is having the special actors in this process. If you think we are still thinking, I apologize in advance with, in advance with UNESCO and all the states about an architecture of the world that is by states. So is an invention of two centuries ago and that didn't change in two centuries. But uh, so can you imagine a car that in two centuries don't, doesn't have a change or something like that, there isn't. So uh, the life went on 
And now we have the cities where more than the 50%, the 60% of the world population live. And that government has to be reinforced, cannot be only a government that says something that is descending from the top to the bottom. It's not like a zip between the people and the states. We have to reform that. And this is a process that is ongoing, it takes time. And to having the city, they stay together with different, different uh, uh, perspectives, different origins, different everything is better because at the, at the, at the end, the difference is there's melt in one name that is humor, human, humanity, humankind. So uh, this process is ongoing. It's not a, a revolution like the history uh, uh, taught us in the past centuries. It's a, let me say, soft revolution because the mayors, they claim more power just to be more effective in the front of the people. And is a duty not only of the cities of the states, there are the universities that has to learn that. University are the brain of humanity. We need the brain. We cannot go anywhere without university, without the people that is thinking and that is work, just thinking. So we need that. This also is an intersectionality. We have one more question that we'll take and then I think if, um... Mayor Scepter hasn't come, we'll rearrange the next session. So could uh, then we get ready for the next speaker to move up if uh, he hasn't arrived in time. So the next question is handle, how do you handle rejection of Muslims um, when you're um, dealing with your interreligious projects by Christian communities, rejection of Muslims by Christian communities? Uh, so it's not easy and is a, is a concerning but is a concern but you have to take into consideration that uh, uh, there is not so much power of the different religions now in europe so we are states that they reason by themselves and they can organize the religious uh, practices in the cities so uh, there is no a rejection if if there is a rejection could be could be that there is a rejection, but is duty of the mayor or of the responsibility, the responsibles of the community to stress that they don't have the duty to say something like this. There is a responsibility of the public speech of the mayors and of the representative elected. And they have to be brave and to say, we, they, you cannot reject also because uh, the participation to a community life is made first of all by you that pay taxes if you pay taxes you need a representation and if you pay taxes you are entitled to be member effective of the community no matter what religion is so that's a very good point um it comes up quite a lot here um we, we have quite a lot of stateless people in Asia as well. And, and often we, we have issues around whether or not they're entitled to services. Um, obviously we have religious conflict in, in some of our countries in the region as well. So um, Mayor Scepter is actually on his way. I just received a message from uh, the office. Uh, we might, in the interest of giving him enough time to speak later, move on to the next session. Um, and we'll come back to the example from Padang uh, when he's arrived. So next we're going to talk about um, what we see as what the network could be focusing on. So if you could put up the next presentation, we can quickly run through that. And Michelle, are you going to do this one? Or did you want me to do it? I don't hear anything, so I will go ahead. So we have been working with um, Guangzhou City um, to think about what would be the priorities for the future. So we had a meeting a couple of years ago when we had some discussions with our uh, members of APCAD about their priorities, and we produced a paper on that for the Habitat 3 conference. And then we've also looked at a number of other documents, including all the several global documents, 
And this plan is looking at how can we link these together with the locally identified priorities of our local government. So next slide, please. So the, the 10 point plan is kind of a, a trademark of ICAR and each of the coalitions has a 10 point plan. And we previously had a 10 point plan of action for APCAD and it was from 2006 to 2016. So we're looking at updating and reviving that uh, for 2020 to 2030. And as you can see, we have used the previous plan and looked at carrying forward the uh, still relevant content from that. The Declaration of Nancy, which is the global ICAR document that sets out the objectives and uh, roadmap for the international coalition. The Habitat 3 paper, which was the local priorities of the local governments from Asia and the sustainable development goals and the other international documents, uh, new urban agenda, etc. Next slide. Um, so well, first of all, we wanted to come up with, uh, we want to base, have some principles of action that we're basing this on that is about equity, about sustainability, about partnership, and about working towards building and sharing evidence and good practices. And, and this is actually really important because local government and, and at many levels of government don't always have great access to data. And this is becoming more and more important in terms of how we develop and implement policies. And there's some great examples around Asia Pacific. For example, the Naga City Migrant Center has been collecting data about migrants in their city for some time and using that in their policy processes. So how we collect and share evidence is actually quite strongly linked to good practice. So we wanted to make that a key point in the 10 point plan. Next slide. So basically then we have 10 priorities uh, about what we wanna do. So that's why it's the 10 point plan of action. So the first one, as I mentioned, given that uh, data is important, is to strengthen city capacity, capacities in research and data collection. Next one. And obviously we want data to make better policy and what, you, uh, what local governments are implementing is policy. So strengthening that policy or strengthening the inclusion in the policy, both in maybe in terms of the process and in terms of the content. Next one. Number three is to foster a culture of learning and skills. Obviously, this is something where everybody suffers these days if they don't keep up with technology, changes, ways things are done. Uh, local governments over the last 10 years have probably all revolutionized in terms of using online platforms and things like that. So constantly learning uh, is really important for local governments to be able to uh, fulfill their requirements of their citizens, but also to promote this among citizens uh, so that they can also improve their lives. Next slide. Um, now we want to, obviously sharing information is great, but developing and trialing new tools is also uh, important. And in particular, uh, in tools about inclusion, but also about gender equality. Uh, we're very keen, to, and this is also in all of the global platforms and goals, to make sure that we include gender sensitivity in that. Next slide. Uh, we also understanding that local governments already do a lot of very good things. We don't just want to say that this is all about what we should do better. This is also about recognizing and promoting what is already done well and sharing case studies, writing these up, having meetings and networking is a, is a key way of doing that. And things like this forum is, is the type of activity that we like to promote for that. So next one. And fostering diversity and promotion of cultural expressions. I think that this is, um, I think this goes back to the point that Benedetto was just talking about in terms of inter-religious diversity is one aspect of diversity. We also want to promote uh, different 
um, ethnic groups or uh, nationalities. We're, we're living in international cities a lot of the time. We want to foster diversity of men and women, diversity of intergenerational things. So diversity in all its forms is important for cities as well. And cities are a really a key place of events and celebrations. And diversity is also very important in terms of um, economic development of cities. So this is a, a, a key one. Uh, number seven is, uh, yep, targeted initiatives to address discrimination and promote equal opportunity. So here we really want to get to the core of what APCAD is about and ICAR, which is about discrimination and racism. And so we specifically want to see how we can use this network to particularly address some of these issues. And I think discrimination is definitely coming out this year as a really key global issue with things like Black Lives Matters campaign across the world. Number eight. Um, again, committing to globally agreed instruments, local governments are playing more and more of a role on the international stage in things like UN Habitat 3 was a very good example. I think the global compact on migration, local government had a very strong role in that. Uh, and this is becoming more and more important, but it's something that local governments don't always feel so close to or aware of. So understanding and integrating these kind of things into local policy is also another good practice. Number nine, please. Sharing information, of course, networking and case uh, good practices and everything are not as good if you don't share them. So we would really like to strengthen the ability of this network to share those kind of informations, to showcase what you do, to use that as an advocacy tool, but also to help you learn from each other by exchanging good practices. And number 10, monitoring and evaluation. How good are we doing when we uh, wanna do these activities, do we do what we said we would do? Did we do it as good as we could? How can we improve it in the future? And this is just about always wanting to see how we can improve the way that we're doing things. So that's the, the 10 points. So that's what we um, propose to you as the way forward for APCAD uh, in, a, in a general framework. And uh, later on, you'll hear um, more from Guangzhou City about some of the specifics about how we might go about implementing that. So um, is that the last slide or is there one more? Yeah, that's it. So um, that's basically what we would like to do with APCAD. And you may have noticed each of the slides had a little um, set of linkages about where it came from. We didn't just make these up. We actually linked them to some of the existing commitments. We linked them to the ICAR commitments, the global commitments, the regional priorities paper. So each of those have basically come out of, although this was put together by the Secretariat, this has been built on the discussions that were had with the members in the past. Um, okay, so the, the mayor is supposed to arrive in about two minutes. So I'm wondering if we just um, take any questions about APCAD's plan and while we wait for him. Okay, it seems that there's no uh, question. The mayor arrives. Probably it would take some time to yeah. adjust to the system. Probably I can present myself first to save uh, the time. Okay, so that's a good idea. So we'll, since we've started talking about the future of APCAD, let's move on to the, the next session. So Professor Shin yong and my Korean pronunciation is no doubt as bad as my I Italian correct, yes. Um, is the executive director of the Gwangju International Center. And uh, of course, probably everybody who's at the World Heritage, uh, World Human Rights Cities Forum knows about the International Center, which plays a key role in organizing the forum. Um, he was formerly a professor at Chonam National University, 
uh, where he was teaching English for more than 30 years. And he was the Dean of International Affairs and he's a Professor Emeritus. So um, we're very lucky to have Professor Shin here today because he's a, been a champion for human rights for a long time in, in terms of supporting the forum and the other work that the Guangzhou International Center does. And he's also playing a leading role in helping to revive and rebuild APCAD. So um, Professor Shin is going to talk a little bit about how we put into practice this uh, 10 point plan of action. Uh, thank you for the invitation again. Uh, in fact, uh, since the city of Guangzhou are uh, in charge of the lead city for APCAD, we have been quite a, a lot of under the stress how thinking about how to make the APCAD reactivated as it used to be before. Uh, so I'm very happy to have this occasion to as, as a like a basis to start again for the future. So this is the brief plan, plan what we have for our future. Uh, in fact, uh, I searched what ECA is, what APCAD is, and what we have to do in the future. So uh, I found that ECA began 2004, and then APCAD two years later was established with the support of uh, UNESCO Bangkok office. And then it started in Korea, Jeju province. Also, uh, Gwangju city uh, hosted one session, one conference in 2012. So we are very happy to uh, work with APCAD to share whatever we have at our hand. So the goal would be to uh, expand and then strengthen the APCAD coalition with the help of UNESCO Bangkok office, mostly by Dr. Su, vice. Then uh, through the promoting 10 point plan of action, we can uh, collab we can strengthen our collaboration. I found that the 10 point plan of action was proposed in Nuremberg at the time of uh, celebration of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And it was adopted in ICA in the same year. And then again, another goal of the uh, of this coalition, uh, we would like to uh, use the coalition as a to expand the human rights cities network in Aspak region. So, ten point plan of action already given, but I will simply uh, browse it through. So, uh, we we evaluate ourselves whether we are discriminating or not, then uh, raising the awareness level of political leaders, promoting inclusive society for the vulnerable groups, then promoting support the vulnerable groups, promoting participatory democracy. In fact, we are not good at participation in politics uh, because we are quite a lot one way or another brainwashed that politics is not good. We, even though the politics is really important for our quality of life. So we have to train ourselves to participate in the political process one way or another. And then we have to uh, promote equal opportunity for in, employers 
and then vulnerable groups. Also, we have to promote or enhance the upper, uh, equal opportunity of the vulnerable groups, not only in municipal government, probably in private sector as well. And then we have to challenge discrimination through education. We have to teach ourselves as well as younger folks to respect each other, even the vulnerable peer groups. And then cultural activity is important to understand the difference. And then systematically prevent racist harassment. In fact, uh, hate speech is getting more activated through the SNS. So uh, this aspect seems to be even more important than at the time of 10 point plan of action was created in 2004. So to promote uh, the, our uh, upcard collaboration, we want to use uh, incentive program with the support of, of uh, UNESCO. Probably uh, we may choose some of the uh, items from 10 point plan of action to award good practices. Another, we hope to uh, train ourselves and then Gwangju City is planning to establish human rights education center. So this kind of device can be used to train ourselves locally as well as regionally. And then through uh, in the future homepage, we can publicize good practices of anti-discrimination policies in different member cities. I hope that this uh, collaboration will produce many good outcomes. Especially we can uh, strengthen regional as well as global network with ECA as well as with the help of UNESCO. We can also promote better collaboration among local government in this region. Uh, probably uh, Sue mentioned research, then we can promote research on discrim against discrimination mobilizing local institutes, research institutes. And then we may share information about funding resources for our future projects. And then we can utilize schools to uh, propagate our goals of anti-discrimination. -disc and then in, in the end, again, uh, we can share our uh, information about human rights, SDGs, environment, peace promotion. We can also uh, promote uh, economic trade among member cities as well as tourism. Uh, this is a simple uh, uh, like a suggestion. So we may have a plan to expand our membership uh, for the effective operation. We may form an executive board as ICA has, probably UNESCO Bangkok office, Guangzhou included. Uh, as I mentioned before, we may propose an annual award as an incentive program. Uh, 
we may think about next meeting in our next discussion. So uh, this is a brief introduction of the plan we have in Gwangju. Hope we can get more feedbacks from you for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shin. Um, so as you can see, um, Gwangju is proposing to move the network forward in quite practical ways that will help members through uh, training, incentives programs, information sharing, and also the kind of networking and, and other collaboration that we can have. And I think that that's a really concrete. Um, we might just hold off on questions until we have the um, mayor from Padang do his presentation. Um, so if you have any questions, you can start to put them into the um, into the Slido chat or the um, uh, chat box and we'll come back to those. So I think thinking now about the, the network, we wanted to actually have a, a solid example from um, a city in Asia Pacific about the kinds of things that the worthwhile kinds of things that local governments do to support their citizens and to combat discrimination. So we invited um, Padang in particular because of their role with the Indonesian network of mayors that's against uh, supporting disabled people. And uh, Padang is one of those cities that's active in that network. So Mr. Hendry Scepter has a Bachelor of Business from the University of Central Queensland, a Master's in International Business from Deakin University, both in Australia. And he was elected as mayor of Padang City in 2009 and he was elected deputy uh, sorry as a member he was elected deputy mayor of Padang and is currently acting mayor um, and he's been one of the leaders in the network of mayors for inclusive cities that I mentioned um, that are actually making a, a real difference for disabled people in Indonesia on the ground through providing city level support services so thank you very much, um, Mayor Scepter, for joining us. And apologies, we have rushed you a little bit after your prayers, but we're very glad that you could join us here today. So over All to right. you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Henry Scepter, and I'm acting for the mayor at this time. Um, Honorable Madam Sue Viz uh, from UNESCO. And... Um, also, Honorable Mr. Bernetto, Bernetto Jaziro, uh, I'm sorry, Jaziro, yeah, from ICARS. Hello, how are you? Sorry, I'm a bit late. Um, also, Mrs. Michel Zhu and Gong, Gongju Shin. Mr. Gongju Shin, how are you? Um, madam, you. I'm very sure, uh, uh, really very sorry for being late because uh, every Friday, I had something that need to be closer to my, you know, the community. It's a must for me to, to be around them every Friday. So uh, I apologize for the any inconvenience. Well, anyway, um, if, if we like to, if you allow, uh, allow us to, you know, give this uh, presentation, we like to uh, tell you something about uh, what exactly Padang has done so far, okay? As you can see, this is the, the uh, slide that we like you to, sh uh, to see that about the policy and program of the Padang city government uh, toward the inclusive city. And next. Next. Can you see the slide? Can you all see the slide? Okay, All right. Um, as yes. you can see, the uh, in um, Padang is the, the capital city of the West Sumatra province. Um, well, uh, actually, you can read it there. Uh, I just want to make it short. The population of the Padang is about uh, nine hundred. Or oh, actually, this is a long. This is the old one. It's a nine hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, people living in Padang, 
And uh, well, as you can see, the next, the mayor, mayor of 2019, 2020 vision and mission, we try to create a society based on excellency and competitiveness, uh, education, trade, and tourism. And also we try to improve the economic growth of Padang City inclusively. And uh, next, well, as we now uh, talking about the 10 World Human Rights Cities Forum meeting about the um, disability people, as you can see, the, um, the disability population in Padang, um, about 3,174 people, or about 0.3% of the pop uh, whole population. And um, mostly they're all mental, sensory, dual, and physical, and especially intellectual people. Common issues, as you can see, we actually have a limited, um, what do you call this, a lack of accessibility, and also discrimination, of course, you know, and. Uh, Every, everywhere we can see they they mean, they've been mean by by people you know and also they are po uh, they are in a circle of poverty and also the uh, well the covid 19 pandemic outbreak and also the um, working opportunities are limited to, towards them now the regulation they government uh, indonesian government already imposes towards uh, in order to save and protect the people with the disabilities as you can see government regulation uh, number eight and also uh, number 52 all of them uh, are in are in action you know and in, in order to protect the disability disability people program and i'm sorry back go back no, before that, yeah, no, after that. Oh, no, I'm sorry, hold on. Next, next, anyone? Okay. Huh? Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Padang City Government Program and Policy also providing so the social welfare for disability. And according to our, our, our mayor regulation in 2019, we fulfill all the basic needs for the disability people. We ensuring all the social functioning implemented. And we improve uh, dignified social welfare and also creating an inclusive community. So we, they, were, they are welcome uh, among, among the uh, people in um, Padang City. Now, so, so, uh, social guidance for di disability is to increase the in independence and capacity of disabilities in accordance with their talents and also the abilities. And you can see all the picture, those people, they, they are managed by the so social department of Padang City, and we manage them so they they may be uh, ready to be working next time when they they need it by by the community so the these people we already given them all the basic need and we also manage them so they be uh, a great like uh, a great among the others you know among the others of their disabilities so this is um, might be uh, i don't know one third of the disabilities people but they can work you know most of them they, they can work properly as the normal people and here we also uh giving a program of for pro productive a uh, productive economic business uh, development for the disabilities you know the goal of providing guidance for disability is to start developing business through providing business assistant needed and strengthening capacity and you can see all the people uh, on the wheel uh, wheelchair they uh, really uh, cooperate they can manage they themselves during the um, practice you know 
and we are lovely to give them all they need. Next. We also assist people with the SIFA, SIFA disability. You can see the, the picture below there. Can you see that? Yeah, um, we provide, yeah, there. That, all, all, all the SIFA disability uh, becoming our concern, uh, becoming the uh, government concern through the so, uh, social um, uh, uh, department of Padang City. The goal is, of course, to fulfill the basic needs of SIVA disabilities, reducing the family burden so that the decent standard of living is realized. Next. We try to empower the disability through International Disability Day of Ceremony. You can see there we also celebrate the International Disability Day of Ceremony. Um, the goal is, of course, in order to recognize them as the assistant of the affirmation for the nation commitment to build awareness for the um, embodiment of self-reliance, quality, and welfare of the disabilities people. Next. We also provide them the friendly zone. You know, for the disability pe uh, people, we, in order to give, encourage them, uh, giving public services, so to improve and complement friendly facilities, and also to eliminate uh, disability barriers in Padang City. Here we can, you can see there. Um, let's see, can you point it there? Yeah, there. You can see the 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 arrow point. We we built there. We built that uh, the the uh, walking distance path only for the disability people. Yeah, there. See, you can see we built there only for disability people. So, so we we uh, give the the disability people the the uh, first concern about that. Okay, next. Now, um, Every, every time that about the assistant for COVID-19 treatment, we never uh, put aside these disability people. They become the, our you know, main concern about helping them. Uh, we had a program from the social department of Padang City about the social aid food addressing to the basic needs of disability affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there you can see still from the social department of Padang City, we give them every, everything they need. You know, they food, um, they, they clothes they need, and we, 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 we give them, them and every day they, they make a report, we comply their report. Okay, next. Okay, um, we also allocated uh, the regional incentive fund in 2020 in order to handle uh, COVID-19 for all the disabilities uh, community in order to providing stimulant to increase self-reliance in striving and active, active in the fulfilling a daily life. So we encourage them to work and we encourage them to give something back to the community, even though they being recognized as the uh, disability people. Next. And we also uh, provide the social assistance for disability and the provision of tools. See, you know, we, we give them the wheelchair for the SIVA disabilities. See, the point. Yep. Okay, next. Okay. Now the the next program is um, the response of disability case. In order to anticipate a restraint, the restraint and stigma in the fulfillment of the right to find solution for disability packaging. Now this uh, we concern about the the youth, you know, the, the young children, and uh, we hope that uh, by by providing them and also by looking after them 
uh, uh, quite regularly. So perhaps we help their family, and that's the way uh, how the uh, Padang City government uh, try to uh, give the, the intention for this this uh, uh, the family of the in in order to give the need, uh, especially for the poor people. Okay. Now we also uh, creating a program. We call it disability friendly house. Disability friendly house. Now the program is in order to giving the education uh, a capacity uh, in, in order to build their skill, even though they disable, disable, or even they come from disadvantaged family in order to improve social rehabilitation services. So this program, uh, we, we, we intended to give it every, every year and we support with the uh, fund allocation. So the house already exists. So they welcome to come to the, the house, uh, the, this program. So they feel uh, be, uh, something that be belonging to them. That we, we look after them. So we try to make them feel as if they are part of the community. So this house is every year. Every every year we fund it by the uh, local uh, fund of, of of the Padang City. Next. In order to make them feel great among the community of Padang City, most of the disabled people we give the award. You know, every every year, you know, uh, towards the uh, celebration of the uh, Padang City, uh, the, the birth of the Padang City. So this year, uh, actually, even though uh, during the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, we still, you know, as you see the, the picture, we, we wore the mask and uh, we give them something, you know, because of they... Uh, uh, you know, they, they, they thinking and they, they action, even though they are dis disabled uh, people, but we, we give them awards, so the other been motivated. In order to give them awards, we, we like to motivate others so they can follow the, the, the one that has been successful. Okay? Now, um, this program also, in order to Excuse me. In order to make uh, dis disabled people uh, being needed, we also had a program, uh, what we called it, every disabled people uh, is part of the, the program. So in order to reach the inclusive city pro uh, program or mission, we included the invoice of full, of full business and the right of the protection of the disabilities. Next. Okay. That's, that's the program that we could show you, Madam Asu and Mr. Bennett, and also Michelle and Go Yu Chin. And uh, at this time, we, we do need your attention that um, um, as uh, the government, and maybe you probably uh, recognize that um, we still need something in order to provide these people. And our plan, our next plan is in order to meet the social uh, rehabilitation needs of the person with the disabilities in the city of the Padang. We do need um, some of the electric wheelchair, about 30 units of them. And also in order, the goal of that is in order to improve disability self-reliance. Do you have the 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 slide for that? No? no? You don't know? Okay. Uh, Madam Sue, actually, we, we forgot to make the, the slide. What we need is that we do need, the, the city need to give the electric wheelchair about 30 units, 30 piece of electric wheelchair in order to improve um, disabled people being self reliant. And also, we do need prosthetic hands 
prosthetic hands. Yep. Prosthetic hands, about 21 unit. 21 unit. And prosthetic leg, about 20 unit. And hearing aid, hearing aid. Um, 20 unit too, 20 unit. Um, reflexology practice equipment, about 30 packages. And provision of computerized tools, about 21 min, uh, unit. This is uh, in order to improve performance services, information system, and also documentation and the reporting. So we do have a five, uh, you know, uh, uh, needs that we need to give to the disabled people, the disability community. Hopefully, with this, you know, uh, 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 you know, with the uh, meeting here, we we could have the feedback from all of you. And this is a great opportunity for Padang City to meet uh, uh, Honorable Mrs. Mrs. Chu, Benedict, Michel, and uh, Wong Yushin, that we could share uh, everything that we need. Actually, we try our best, but we do need some help, especially with this pandemic. The corona has no you know, uh, ending. You know? We don't know when they ended. So, Hopefully you could help us, you know, by giving this uh, need that we gave it to you. Uh, I don't know if you need the, the the letter or the paper. We could give it you, and um, uh, that's it. I think that's all, right? Right? Okay. Maybe that's that's that we can see that. Maybe we can discuss that if everything that you need that we can discuss it because uh, we do concern about this um, disabled people really and uh, how we can improve it we do need your guidance we do we do need your information and we do need your experience and also your 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 uh, uh, knowledge you know because we 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 still learning how to protect our people from from discrimination that you said before that's okay. all mrs uh, uh, sue and if you do have a question we lovely to hear it and we'd love you to answer it. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mayor Septa. That was a great example of, you're, you're still thinking about your disabled people even now and how you can help them. So I think it really shows how much you care and uh, a really good example of how, um, this is part of a network where mayors from different cities in Indonesia also work together to share and help help each other out by that sharing and also to build up the profile and the ability to respond to the needs of their local citizens. So I'll invite any questions um, for um, Mayor Septa. I see that we have a couple here. Um, do you have any members of your council or your community objecting to you uh, allocating resources for disabled people in the community? Okay. is the first uh, question and there's a second okay. one is about how do you motivate your politicians at the high level to make decisions to support disabled people so um, often high level decision making doesn't support this and you've obviously managed to do that so you've got two questions there okay um okay this is uh, thank you madam so um uh, the question i'm sorry the, the, the question from linda is it how do you see the potential partnership? I'm sorry, what, what, can you repeat the so, question? The first question is, um, do you get objections from within your council or your community about the amount of money that you spend to support disabled oh, no, people? No. Well, um, I answered that from the, um, the House of Representatives or the council, we, we, we do have uh, a great support, uh, a, a lot of support from them and of course, there is a limitation because our, our fund is quite limited uh, for the, um, uh, the, the for building this uh, city. But anyway, uh, especially for the disabled people, we do allocate it uh, amount of fund 
for them to in order we give them support every year as you can see that every program that we give it to you through this slide that's the the proof that we do think about them you know uh, I, I, I don't know whether that is uh, good enough or it's uh, uh, quite enough for them we still need maybe uh, recommendation from from uh, from the from the uh, forum you know from the human rights uh, how much money that we should put for these disabled people we should learn about that so um thank you again very much for that and um i think since we've only got around 10 minutes left we might come back to discussion around apcad i will follow up with delia about your request and see if we can come up with some way to help you so delia is in our unesco office in jakarta and she facilitated the connection here of bringing Mayor Septa. So we will correspond with you through Delia about your request, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. Thank you. So I'm going to hand over now to Professor Shin, who would like to invite comments and um, discussion around APCAD and the, the plan that we too have presented to you and you, your ideas for how we could move this forward. So over to you, Professor Shin. Uh, thank you again for the time. Uh, hope in the time left only nine minutes, hope we can share more uh, information and then some cues for future direction. Uh, anybody who would like to share ideas? Benedetto, you might have some advice to us. Even though your voice gone, but still your voice is still great. Yes. No, it, I was impressed because uh, just two years ago, Ecker launched the Ecker Award. That was interesting. Like to was intended to bring the people more close to the network and more active in the network, because the incentives are absolutely necessary. So uh, was really difficult to organize who is voting, who is voting for, and so on. But I think it's a good incentive. Then COVID became and everything stopped, but it's okay. And um, the other things about the incentives is uh, not positive incentives. I don't know the other coalition, but to be part and member of the European Coalition of Cities, we, every member, they pay fee annual fee wow. is really poor let me say fee compared to the other network participation because uh, i think the maximum is two thousand euros per year something like that then there is the commitment of the city that is a quiet commitment is not written down but is to travel to uh, two times per year for the meeting that we have so it's for that that we didn't want to increase our fee but if you ask a uh, really easy fee like this to a city, maybe the city, they are more eager to stay there because also the political body, the opposition in the town council ask why there is the expensive, the expenditure. And so you can say something. And if you don't do nothing, is really difficult. So it's an incentive, it's a reverse incentive. I don't know how to, to describe that, but maybe also this one can be useful. I don't know. Paying something, a quotation for the European cities is something uh, that is, uh, so yes, for that you need to have a, an organization. We have our steering committee, we have our board of presidency, we have our general assembly, we have our statute, is something that make complicated everything, but something that in my opinion is right. Maybe it's a European mind, I don't know, but it's really just to have the possibility to think at the medium and long term. I think it is very good uh, advice. You have money, you have your mind over there, your commitment to that. Whether the amount of contribution is small or large, it does not matter. Some token of contribution seems to be very important. What do you think about having, you talked about assembly, 
probably uh, establishing uh, executive board. So you have uh, something like that about Iker or about Acker? I didn't understand. Like a, so in Acker, uh, we have our. Let, let me say we are our bodies of representatives. So there is the general assembly that is one time per year will be mm -hmm. online at the beginning of December this year, where the people stay and so on, and they approve the balance of the association every year. Then there is the steering committee, a 25th uh -huh, yeah. that stay there. So the ECCAR uh, coalition are 152, 150, yes, 52 cities around Europe, plus Israel. And uh, yes, there is this body that directs the, the situation and all the things. So I cannot act like a king, I'm the president, but uh, to take a decision and to confront myself with the board of director, we have, a, in this moment, we have four vice presidents that we set up for uh, some priorities. There is uh, the vice president for the relation with UNESCO, the vice president for the relation with the Arab coalition and something like that, or the youth or other things, topics, and so on. The board is, uh, meeting one time per month online. Yes. Then there is the steering committee twice per year and the general assembly once per year. The president is elected for a mandate of four years. This is my second mandate. I'm at the ALF, I'm almost at the ALF. The sufferings for the European cities is quite at the end, mm -hmm. having me as president. You have a secretariat? We have you? an office of secretariat that is based in Heidelberg. And uh, from there is, uh, is interesting because so we are an association, we were founded in Nuremberg. For that is with German association. You can, the, the first act against racism and discrimination is that a German association has an Italian president. It's just joking. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, for the rest, the Secretariat has to be in Germany. So it's a city of the network, Heidelberg, that applied for five years. For five years, they are the, the Secretariat. They organize, they coordinate the work, they coordinate the relation among cities. This is essential. I can speak a lot, I can speak very well, but there is, there is not a coordination through the office of the Secretariat in Heidelberg, nothing happened. I can do that also because, let me say, I, I'm not paying for to be the president. So it's an honorable charge, but uh, uh, no, I cannot give all the time that I wish to do uh, to, to, to the network. For that, the secretariat where the city applying to be secretariat is automatic a vice president, and then he promised to hire a person and employees specifically for Ecker. That make the, really, is, is funny to think uh, how much uh, we didn't take into consideration how this structure is fundamental to have the works done. It's not easy. And the work that Heidelberg is doing in this moment for us is a lot. Like only also our conferences and so on online and to organize and so on is not a charitable charitable work. So, and the cities, the European cities, are appreciating more and more. So for that, I think is an incentive to be more effective. Otherwise, uh, it's something that is just because Professor Sheen is a good man, is really good, nice, and so on. But what happens if you change? your work or you change your priorities for something that happened in your life. So I don't know, but so to, to keep in that, for example, when change a mayor in a city is something complicated because maybe change the majority, change the ideas. So if you pay a fee, if you pay a fee and uh, it's difficult to, that a mayor withdraw from association also because it's a shame for them. So it's an association against racism. So it's complicated to justify with the newspaper, with the people that you withdraw from an association like this, but uh, maybe you are a sleeping member, so you're not proactive as before, but the fee 
and this bureaucratic, uh, less as possible because I hate bureaucracy, but less as possible, these bureaucratic things keep the city there. And sorry, one more time for my voice. Very wonderful advice. Uh, it is almost the time to wrap up. Uh, hope everybody get a lot of inspiration from the presentations and then advice from our friend in Europe, Polonia. Uh, hope we can continue to collaborate with uh, the Benedetto one way or another. And then the, your advice will be very uh, beneficial to all of us. Uh, so then, then I will continue to consult with you and then collaborate with Sue and then Michelle in the future with the help of the, everybody uh, in local governments in Asia Pacific region. Uh, hope, I think we can do something more later uh, because it is already the time to finish. The, yes, this is not the place to make decisions. So sharing information seems to be enough today. Okay. And okay. Sue, so would you give some closing comment? Yes. Thank you very much for that. And whilst we have everybody before you leave, I just wanted to mention one thing. We've been trying to reconnect with people over the last six months. And we've found it very, very difficult to identify individuals within local governments to write to. When we approach the councils through the general emails, we don't get any response. And um, I would really encourage you, if you can, to uh, reach out to and send an email to me. And I, I don't know if I put my um, email address in the chat now. If you can send me contact details uh, about how to keep in touch with you and how to create, how we can actually con connect to your local government, that would be great because this is actually one of the difficulties with us in this region uh, is finding those email addresses and ways to contact you effectively. So I'd like you to join with me in thanking our speakers today. I think we've been given a very interesting overview of different levels of what local government can do working together and how much can be achieved. So thank you firstly to Benedetto for sharing the experience of um, ICAR and ECAR and Bologna. You actually gave a lot today. You had quite a bit to cover. Um, Mayor um, Scepter for sharing the experience of the Thank you. Thank you. This was actually also a great case study of how um, local governments work together and you can see all of the things that Padang has managed to achieve and how they're still working for those disadvantaged people in their community even today as we speak. And Professor Shin, of course, for taking on the mantle of uh, Lead City for APCAD. Um, and we, we look forward, hopefully, next time to actually seeing your faces and not just ourselves um, during a discussion where we can um, take this forward. So over the next two or three months, you'll be hearing from us about how we uh, want to take APCAD forward and trying to kick off some of these things that we've been talking about. You'll see Professor Shin's also shared his email in the chat. So you can contact either of us. And we, we very much look forward to hearing from you. And um, yeah, please join us in the ICAR session later today if you still have some energy and time to discuss this network and how it can um, be developed. And a final thank you to everybody at the Guangzhou International Center, all the people working for the World Human Rights Cities Forum, who've been working tirelessly for a long time to make this happen, and particularly the last few weeks. And, and this is obviously not going to be like this in the first place. They've had to change their plan several times, but they've been working night and day for the last couple of weeks to, to make all of these things come together. So a big round of applause, as much as we can do from afar. Um, to all of those and I hope we see you all again uh, before too long uh, when we can meet in person. So goodbye for today.